majority of column array speakers out there right now just suck. Well guys, welcome to the garage. If you guys don't know, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Feel free to subscribe, follow me on Instagram, all that fun stuff right there. Yeah, do it. These behind me are the TurboSound IP300s. You guys probably just saw them in the latest gig log that I just posted, which was the first time using these out in the real world. I was kind of liking them. They're different, but I was kind of liking them. That all changed last night. Last night I used them at the second wedding at a bigger venue, and I literally now hate these speakers. Let me tell you why. So this was out at a castle venue, not too far from here. I'll, I'll show some pictures and clips. It's about 40 feet wide, and roughly about 80, 80 feet long. Um, definitely a lot longer than what we were at Friends Farm. Set of pictures are right here. We were using the two TurboSound IP300s with two JBL PRX 715XLF subs. Side note, JBL PRX 15 inch subs, the 815 XLFs, which are the same as the 715 XLFs that I have. For, from portability to sound output, they're amazing. Anyways, we did ceremony, cocktail, dinner, all in the same room and reception, all in the same room with the same setup. When I'm trying to play the low level sort of background music so that people can still have conversations to that. What I was finding is that these speakers drop off heavy right around 50 feet out. So when you're projecting forward right around 50 feet out, the sound output literally just goes whoo. It's not gradual either. It's like nosedive, like instant. What I was having to do is play the tops at a considerably high level for like a cocktail portion or a dinner portion in front of the DJ booth to be able to achieve volume at the far end of the room. And that just didn't work really well. I was blasting the, the like tables in front of me and I, it, I hated it. And then when I did introductions, I'm standing about midway towards the, the far end of the room doing my introductions and I found myself literally shouting on the mic, like shouting into the mic, just so I could like hear myself. Obviously it was loud enough, everyone could hear what I was saying, we had it, Th these speakers are loud enough. It's just they can't throw sound. They literally cannot throw sound. A standard point source top, like the like a 12 inch speaker, a 15 inch speaker, they can throw sound. You put them up on a speaker stand and they will project the sound and it'll gradually taper off. With these, they don't do that. They drop off heavy, which means you need to use like side or rear fill speakers to fill in those gaps. Now, it's not all bad news. One thing these speakers excel at is when you want to push them loud. So when it came to open dancing, when I actually turned them up, I did mention in my last gig log, these things get plenty loud in front of the DJ booth on the dance floor. During open dancing, I was able to get really loud, like a nice, good sound on the dance floor. Sounded clean, sounded great. And it tapered off and had that moderate volume that I was trying to do during the open dancing portion so that the people in the back can be sitting at tables and can still have conversation. And then when you're up on the dance floor, it's nice and loud. But the fact that they don't have the throw that I need for dinner and cocktail just doesn't make them worth it. So overall, my recommendations for the TurboSound IP300s behind me is that they are not good for a main speaker, but they are good for like a cocktail speaker. If you want to put like a speaker in one room for like cocktail music, really good speaker for that. Really full range sound for doing like cocktail music. And they'd also be good for just the ceremony speaker. As far as like pairing them with subs and trying to use them as mains, unless you're running side fills and rear fills in the back of the room, um, they're they're just not good. Now let's move into the actual topic of the thumbnail and the clickbait title of this video, and that is discussing why majority of column array speakers out there right now just suck. So let's start things off with the number one speaker that people recommended to me on Instagram, link right there. Uh, after the wedding, literally yesterday, I posted that I hate these speakers and people just went off in the comments. Everyone was like, you need to try the EV of all 50. Well, if you remember, at the end of 2018, I actually was at a wedding with my buddy Ray out at Friends Farm, a venue I'm very familiar with in terms of how a lot of different speakers, including my SRX series, sound at, and he was using the EV of all 50s. And I've heard them in many other cases as well. I will say straight up, all of the column arrays out there right now, I'm talking about the RCF, the Bose, the EV of all 50s, these, the turbo sound options, the JBL Eon, uh, like one a pro array or whatever, the LV Systems Valley 5 Go, 
Um, those are the ones I've heard. I've never heard like the FBTs yet. I really want to check out what the FBT sounds like. But anyways, overall, out of all of those that I've heard, the EV of all 50s have the best overall sound. From the highs to the mids to the lows, the sound is the best. It has the cleanest sound and it, it literally is just the best sounding column array out there. There's two things I do not like about the EV of all 50s. The bass output is good for most events, but for, for my taste, I mean, I bring two 15 inch subs out and I literally put them at almost at limit at every event because I want bass. I like a lot of bass. The EV of all 50s do bump. They have some good bass to them, but they don't have enough for what I would like. Now that's not a game breaker for most people out there and that's why they're a really popular speaker. But there is one flaw that I do not see a lot of people talking about with the EV of all 50s and that is the height. The Evolve 50s have a standard pole that you put into the sub and then the top, but you cannot raise the array. It is stuck at that height as of now. And what ends up happening, and I literally got to listen to this in person at that wedding out at Friends Farm, is that because they are so low, because that high mid uh, top portion of the Evolves is so low, it literally is not too much higher than most people's average head height. And what ends up happening is if you have a packed dance floor, if you get a lot of people up on the dance floor, like you most likely are going to have, what ends up happening is that group of people absorbs all of that sound because the speakers are literally firing right into the people. When you go to the back of the dance floor, it is really quiet, even though the evolves are like pumping out at limit and i got to witness this firsthand, and that is the one reason why i will not get the evolve 50s now you could do a hack to the ev evolve 50s to achieve both of the reasons why i don't like them and that is buying say like an ev elx 12 inch sub and then stacking the evolves on top of them you'll get more bass output and you'll get those mid and high drivers an extra foot in the air which probably would achieve what you want to do and what the sound profile I will be looking for. Only problem is you get into a lot more money, especially since the EV of all 50s are one of the most expensive column arrays out there. All right, so now let's talk about the Bose L1. I have heard this speaker multiple times in person, and I'm just gonna straight up say it, I, it, it just does not have it. It just does not. It does not have anywhere near the bass. The, the highs and mids are just not there and it just does not have the output. It, I, I don't, feel free to comment down below, but I just don't think it has it. Now let's move over into the JBL Eon 1 and Eon 1 Pro. It's gonna go right along the lines of the Bose and um, it just does not have it. it. It does not have the bass. Definitely does not have the output. Even costing less than the EV of all 50s, it's, it's, just, it's just not there, it's just not. It's not. And uh, we'll, we'll jump right into the LD Systems Maui as well. It just doesn't have it. It does not have it. All of those three right there, the LD Systems, the JBL, the Bose, they, they all, for the price, they just they just don't have it. Unless you're doing parties under 100 people, they just, they just don't have it for me. Now I will say a caveat there, LD Systems does make a column array that costs a significant amount more outside of the price range that could do it, but you're looking at like way too, it's, it's not even worth talking about. All right, I didn't leave it off. Last one I wanna talk about, and I saved the best for last because this is honestly the one I'm looking at getting, um, is the RCF Evoc 8. And we could also throw in there uh, the J8s as well. Compared to the EV Evolve 50s, the sound is very comparable. I will give the edge to the EV of all 50s having the better sound, but the RCFs are right there with them. The one thing that the RCF has over the EVs is the fact that the top high and mid drivers are on a adjustable pole so that you can put them up nice and high over top of everyone's heads and project your sound. I've never AB'd them side by side, but I do actually think that the RCF might have the edge in the base department. They're both 12 inch subs, so it, it's very hard to tell. Again, both of them don't have the base that I necessarily want, but I do think the RCF has a little more base. Now you might be asking the question, Ricky, you just talked about the turbo sounds dropping off heavy at 50 feet. Why would the Evolve 50s or the RCF Evoc 8s that you're looking at not do the same thing? When doing my research, and trust me, I did a ton of research before I bought these, 
I overlooked one thing, and that was the actual design of the horns. I'll show a little closer up of the turbo sound, but what they did was they took four tweeters up top and they angled them. Compared to the EV Evolves and the RCF and pretty much all the other arrays that I mentioned, have all straight firing tweeters and mid drivers, which is what I think is the flaw in the turbo sounds because they angled them, they were more trying to project sound to the left and right to achieve that very wide coverage versus the other ones that I mentioned have all the straight firing ones. So they're meant to focus sound out into the sides versus these are more focused at really wide side coverage. And in hearing the Evox and the EV of all 50s in person, I actually noticed that clearly that they don't drop off heavy. That was something I overlooked. I'm gonna be honest, I was expecting these to sound like the EV Evolve or the RCF Evoc, the top portion. I was expecting these to sound just like the tops of the speakers, which obviously in practice, I found out that they don't sound anywhere near it, which uh, also might lead to why they cost so little. Now, for anyone that's still watching this video at this point, first off, thank you very much. Feel free to leave a like on this video because it's very detailed and very long. I've been talking a lot about column arrays. A lot. And uh, I'm about to blow your mind because uh, column arrays really do suck. If you are going to compare, say, the EV of all 50s, even with adding the two 12-inch subs, like I said, or the RCF Evoc 8s or the J8, it is not, and I repeat, is not going to sound better or even the same as two subs and two tops. The technology is not there. You are going to get a better overall sound, a better sound profile with a traditional setup with two subs and two tops or even bigger. And this becomes very true when you get into bigger events. Column rays really are not there for most events 200 plus. They are not there at all. Most column rays are more in the 150 under club, maybe 200. Most of them are in that vicinity in terms of the people that you're going to have at your events. Let me bring up another point about those smaller events and then I'm going to talk about the bigger events as well. With those smaller events, one thing with the column arrays that they do do good at is give you more sound for the money. So let's think about this. Say you got a thousand dollars right now, right? Say you got 800 to a thousand dollars to spend on a uh, a speaker. You could buy an EV EKX 15 top, you could buy a JBL PRX 15 top, you could buy a QSE K12. You could also buy an RCF Evoc J8 for $800 or RCF Evoc 8 for $1,000. The sound profile of the Evoc is going to be a lot greater. You're going to have a lot more full range because you're going to have a dedicated sub and dedicated mid and high drivers. So you're going to get more bass out of the system compared to just the, that single top. But countering that, if you do go with say two QSC K12s or two 15 inch tops and you add 18 inch subs, well then that sound system is going to be a lot more and have a lot more capability than just the RCF Evoc 8s. So it's really all about thinking about what you want to do. If 95% of your events are 150 and less, then two Evox 8s is the better option to get. But say you do those 100, 150 person events, but you also do a lot of events that are 200, 250, maybe 300, it's probably going to be a a better option to buy the two traditional 12 or 15 inch tops and buy two 18 or 15 inch subs because you will have the larger output to be able to do those big events and those small events. I will tell you guys straight up the ideal column array speaker for me to meet the base criteria that I want to meet the output that I want to meet the ability to raise the highs and mids above everyone's crowds and shoot the highs and mids long. It's the RCF Evoc 12. That is a 15 inch sub and a even larger array driver. And the only reason I didn't mention it in this video until now is because it costs $2,500 for, for one of the RCF Evoc 12s. I can buy three RCF Evoc J8s for the price of one RCF Evoc 12. As much as you guys think I love to blow money on all kinds of gear and stuff like that, I actually go through a pretty thorough process of making sure it's a smart investment. 
and uh, I've already gone through the process. The RCF Evoc 12 is not a smart investment for me. But RCF Evoc 8s, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe the J8s. We will see in 2020 if that's what I switch to. But I will leave you guys on this final note, and that is I am no longer using the TurboSound IP300s. Um, if any of you guys want to buy them off me because uh, they've gone up in price recently. I think now they cost 500 a piece. I only paid like 320 a piece for these. So if you guys want to use these for like a cocktail or a ceremony speaker, uh, hit me up on Instagram. Uh, maybe we can work out a deal. But I'm going to be going back to using my JBL PRX 712s uh, with my JBL PRX 715 XLF subs, which I've already said are amazing. But anyways, guys, this was a very long video of me just sitting down in front of a camera talking about speakers, talking about a lot of the research that I've already done in the market, a lot of the in-person experience I've had with these speakers, a lot of, uh, I get, this is all my opinion, people. I know the comments are gonna go rampant, but let me know what you guys thought of this video. Let me know what you guys uh, uh, experience are with column arrays. On that note, guys, um, I'm gonna, on that note, on that note, guys, I'm gonna go back to using, and on that note, guys, I'm not gonna, uh, comments, subscribe, like, as always guys, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Keep the market spinning. Peace.